So uh, with this video, you should be able to understand the binding change model for how ATP synthase fabricates ATP. And I'm uh, going to use a different symbolic language than the one that you see in figure 18.31. Uh, I'm going to be using these uh, seashells to represent the uh, catalytic apparatus of the alpha-3, beta-3 hexamer for ATP synthase. And uh, let's begin by removing the gamma subunit so we can focus on this hexamer. We have three beta subunits, those are the large shells, and we have three alpha subunits, and those are the little shells. In reality, they're all about the same size, but I just want to make it clear that we're going to focus on what's happening at the three beta subunits. The alpha subunits always bind ATP, and they are just there for structural support. And if we remove the alpha, if we remove the gamma subunit, these beta subunits are also going to bind and stabilize interactions with ATP. That is the, the, the default state of the beta subunits. Without interactions um, provided by the gamma subunit, they would all prefer to bind ATP. And um, sure, you've made three ATP molecules in the active sites, this way, but there's no way to get them out of the active site. They are kind of stuck, and therefore it's not really a useful way to fabricate uh, ATP. We need the gamma subunit, and we need uh, the rotation of the gamma subunit to cycle between these L, T, and O states. Uh, recall that the gamma subunit is being rotated uh, as a consequence of protons going through the A subunit attaching themselves to the glutamate on the C-ring, and then coming out on the other side in the other half channel on the A subunit. So with the proton motive force driving rotation of the gamma subunit, we can now study what happens to uh, these, uh, these beta subunits. So the T state, uh, this, uh, this form, this interaction between the gamma subunit and this beta subunit will stabilize ATP binding. So that is that remains in the ATP bound form. The L state is kind of neutral with respect to nucleotide binding and uh, will prefer to bind with ADP and uh, inorganic phosphate. So I'm going to put uh, ADP and inorganic phosphate at the active site of this beta subunit. And now the O state does not tolerate binding of ATP and will be ejecting the ATP. And so here, and this ATP now becomes usable for the rest of the, by the rest of the cell it is because it has been pried loose from the active site of this beta subunit. Now the gamma subunit is going to rotate, driven by the proton motive force. And what happens then is that this beta subunit that was in the T state goes into the O state. Um, always remember, the order, if we're making ATP, is going to be LTO. So that what used to be the T state beta subunit is now an O state. And it will also pry loose uh, an ATP, making it use, usable by, by the cell. So now we've made two ATPs. Um, and over here, what used to be the L state is now the T state. So this, this uh, nucleotide... ADP and inorganic phosphate is going to be chemically transformed into ATP. And I don't really have a good way to illustrate that, but uh, it, th these same chemical uh, molecules are now have a covalent bond attaching them. So now we have an ATP in this active site of this beta subunit. And the L state at this beta subunit, previously in the O state, is now free to bind ADP and inorganic phosphate. And then, of course, this is happening in real time. It rotates another 120 degrees. The ATP, uh, because of interactions with the O state, is uh, ejected and becomes part of the usable pool of, of um, uh, ATP. Uh, the T state, uh, because of its tight interaction with ATP, is going to encourage covalent attachment of that phosphate to the ADP, and the, uh, this uh, L uh, state over here is now free to bind another ADP. So I, I hope you can see that through rotation, uh, uh, at each time we encounter the O state, we remove ATP from the active site, increasing the amount of ATP we fabricated. Each time we encounter the T state, we transform ADP 
into uh, and inorganic phosphate into a molecule of ATP, tightly held uh, at the active site of the beta subunit.